So welcome. Uh, I'm going to tie uh, Jay Nicholas here. Uh, I'm going to tie a. Um, I'm going to try a single station tube. You could call it an intruder if you want to. Um, it's it's a it's a variation of an intruder, uh, but it's a single station. It's a little bit smaller. It's, I was going to say it's smaller than a big fly. But it's kind of obvious. And I'm going to use a, you know, you could use any color thread you want. I'm using a bright thread here, hoping that it'll show up a little bit better. And I always like to, now some people like to cover their tube in advance. I usually don't. Number one, I don't think you need to. And number two, I have difficulty gauging just how far up the tube I'm going to go, so I don't want to over overdo it. So I got a little bit of Loctite on there. Any kind of cement would work fine. Now I'm going to put on, I'm going to spin on a butt section, and I'm going to use, now I've got Ice Dub here. You could use Ice Dub, you could use Diamond Bright. Uh, you could use STS. There's what I want is to build up a little bit of bulk. I am going to spin this in a loop. You don't have to. You could just uh, finger spin it. But I, I like to build up a little bit of uh, have a little bit of sparkle there and a little bit of. Um, a little bit of, uh, I'm struggling for the words, volume. Because I want this bump at the rear of the tube to cause the next material I put on to flare out a little bit. Now, some people might be looking at this bump and saying, man, that's big. Some people might be looking at it saying, gosh, that's really small. So. In many respects, beauty is in the eye of the beholder on these flies. If you want to tie a low water fly, uh, something really subtle, you could make that bump smaller. Uh, if you want real high water, you could make it even bigger and you could put some uh, spiky materials in there like uh, Senyo Predator Wrap. But for now, this is just right. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to add here is I'm going to put on, I want some flow. I want, I want a little bit more volume and I want some wiggle. This is a craft fur brush and it's got some purple short fibers and some black long fibers. Now these brushes, you, you could spin a loop and achieve what I'm going to achieve here. Uh, these brushes are really handy. I tend to like the uh, the three inch brush be because it it gives me, I think, just the right amount of volume. Now, when you're wrapping this on, you've got to be kind of careful. You don't want to wrap your uh, you don't want your fibers to be trapped because. You want the, the fullness, but you also want those longer fibers to be free and flow in the current. You know, we steelhead anglers are, you know, we're hung up on, we want flow and motion. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I know it's a good thing, but I also know that steelhead eat sticks too, and sticks don't have a lot of flow in them, but Still, I want to. I don't want my flies to look like a stick. I want them to have some motion. So there we have a nice. And by the way, so I th this fly is. I'm using a color palette here. That I know steelhead find pleasing, but you can you can follow these same steps that I'm doing with the same types of materials, and vary the color and come up with a, a different color theme and, and, the, and that's the whole thing. You know, do you want a dark cast fly, a, a pale fly, an olive, an orange, a black and blue, 
uh, the beauty is that you can you can work with this the same platform and create flies with different color hues. Um, so I've got a little bit of a little bit of motion here. Now I want to I want to jazz. I, I want some something a little bit bolder that's going to uh, that's going to give me a little bit more wiggle. And I'm going to use some grizzly feather tips. Um, I, I like these a lot. You know, as, as a fly tire in this, there was a time when you could just say, okay, we're going to tie this fly with grizzly saddle fe feathers. And you could do it year after year after year. And by the way, there's nothing magic. I'm, I'm just kind of putting these on and I'm lashing them down. That's all the fancy you need to get. Anyway, you, you, you could you just know next year if I need some more grizzly ha hackle feathers, I just order them. Well, in these days, that's not always the case. And these days, you don't know if a fashion craze is going to come along and uh, make it impossible to get some of these materials. Uh, that can be true with uh, feathers, uh, with ostrich, with marabou, with all sorts of things. So, um, so the question is, you know, gosh, I know this fly works with grizzly hackle tips. Are there are there alternatives? Well, yeah, there are. You could use um, you could use fibers from a lady Amherst feather. Now these are getting kind of hard too. Uh, you could use uh, ostrich, and maybe you want to use a barred ostrich. And and by the way, you know when I talk about barred ostrich, you know these are both ostrich feathers. This one's thick and fluffy. This one's slender. Uh, they both work. Certainly the fly has a different uh, look or different feel to it. Uh, and, and part of this is finding a, uh, finding a look that, that the angler finds attractive. And, and uh, we all have, so I'm, I'm going to use the slender. This is, uh, I think this is Montana Fly Company ostrich. And it's a. Uh, uh, it, it's one of the more consistent ostrich materials that we can get these days. But one one of the things I, I want to uh, assure you is, if you can't get it next time, don't worry about it. Grab something else. Uh, maybe try. Uh, the micro pulsator rabbit strips. The really the the little skinny rabbit strips. Um, try um, some other feathers. Uh, the, the point is, you're looking for something that's going to create a color contrast and some motion. Okay, so I've got I've got some flare here, and and the reason we've got this bulk back here is we'd rather not have these materials just go straight back. When, when, they're, uh, when, they, f when they're, they come up like this, then they tend to wiggle in the water a little bit. And I do think that that wiggle, I think fish find that pleasing. So now I'm looking, f I'm looking for, uh, I could stop right now, and this, this fly would fish. But you know, I want I want to have it just be a little bit bolder. So I'm going to grab a uh, purple. This is a saddle hackle. You could use uh, the important thing is finding the right feather, whether it's a saddle or a schlappen. Uh, you'd like something that isn't this wide, because then you might as well be using marabou. But I'm looking for a feather that's got some of this. Uh, fluffy, downy stuff on it. And this saddle feather has got it. And again, this is purple. But you know, 
You could be tying this with olive or orange or black. So I'm going to tie this in by the tip. Got that, those fibers separated. Now one of the fun things here is whether or not I'm going to tie this in, whether it's going to pull loose when I start to wrap. And I hope it doesn't. But it does, you know, at least 25% of the time. So the issue of how much fullness is just right, that, that, is, that is another, by the way, as I'm winding this, this is going really well. Um, we're going to keep our fingers crossed. You will see flies that the, the people fish, and they're, they're effective. And some of them are, are just, they're like a giant, they're like a gunny sack on here. They, they're just, they're dense. All the, they may have a butt station and a shoulder station, but when they're wet, it, it all flows together. You can't see the waste. It's just a big wad of stuff. Darn steel, I won't eat them. Um, sometimes they won't. Sometimes the steelhead will only take a fly if it's sparser. Uh, I tend to, I, what's the right amount of sparseness? We, we have our opinions. If in, I think if you go and you look at, uh, look at a fly catalog, look at images online, you will see a huge range of variety. And all I can say is, um, All I can say is I, I I'm tying this fly so it will have a, a fairly short section that's relatively dense and then about say one third and then two thirds that's quite sparse and motiony. Uh, this gets the fish's attention. This gets them to commit. So hello, I'm here. Now you're going to take, you're going to eat this. Now, that makes, that's a great story. I have no idea if that's really what the steelhead are thinking. But, uh, but let's, let's say that it is. It, may, it makes it fun. Now, do we have to have flash? We've already got some flash in the, uh, in the butt section. But let's see. I got some midge flash here just because it's kind of traditional and I don't really want to have to unwind that great. That saddle hack worked out so nicely. I'm going to try to lay in. A few strands of midge flash here. It, it's a little bit dicier here when you uh, when you put flash in front of your schlappen. It's a little bit dicier in terms of are you going to be able to lash it in and still have it look good. Now I think I am. Uh, in part because this midge flash is it's really slender. And because I'm going to finish this fly with a guinea hackle. Now, if, if I'm successful here, I think I will be, it's conceivable that next season everybody will be tying their flies by putting the schlappen on first and then adding the flash. So let's, let's see if that comes about. Okay. I got my flash on there. You will find some some materials that w that are so cooperative that they always work. It's more common to find uh, uh, be because feathers each feather can be different, even from the same saddle. Some of the stems will have a twist in them. And some don't. 
And if you've got a stem that's got a twist in it, it is not going to behave on you. And you and so so for tires that haven't got a lot of experience, sometimes uh, you think, oh, I'm doing something wrong. Well, some, sometimes you're not doing anything wrong. You just got a, an uncooperative feather. Um, now, the really tough thing is when you get two feathers in a row that won't cooperate. I don't think that's happening to me. I think I've got a cooperative feather here. And I think three turns is plenty. I just want, I want to, this little accent on the front. Now, I, I really can't see what I'm doing, so I'm, I'm kind of, kind of feel for the stem. And now I want to, so, so another thing here is I'm, uh, and I, I've done well in this case. Notice I don't have a, a big bunch of thread buildup out here. Which is uh, which is nice. It means I've had uh, my craftsmanship is good, and that guinea feather is behaving and it's slanted back. I'm tying my whip finish. Now you realize there's no weight on this fly so far. I can put put on one of these new beads. This is a small one, a small bead. That's, that's going to uh, penetrate the surface flow uh, more quickly, get me down where the fish are. Now, let's say I'm, I'm fishing a deeper run. Let's say I want, I, I want to be down four or five feet, and I want to be down there promptly. Then I may go for a larger bead. And the color you want is up to you. We've got a bunch of different options. I'm going to show you a large and a hot pink. So this will bring that, this will bring that fly. You throw it out there, it'll start to go down immediately. Uh, you don't have to wait for your tip to get down. Um, so, so you, you've got options. So this, this is my awkward way of saying you could fish it with, um, you could also uh, finish it with a set of intruder eyes. But I'm going to finish this fly with this bead. And let me show you how I'm going to finish it. I'm going to trim right here. Try to keep this in field of view. I'm just going to touch the blue flame just very lightly. We don't want to set this on fire. And we don't want to seal the hole. And if we think we might have sealed the hole, which we, don't, we didn't want to, we get a bodkin and we open it up. There we go. Now I'm going to show you, hopefully, how to rig this fly. I have a, uh, it's an up eye uh, Gamagatsu. I'm going to thread this right through the back of the tube. I think I am anyway. Imagine how much fun this would be if I was out on the river and my fingers were numb. So there's the knot right there snug with the tube. Now I'm not going to hold on to the front of the fly because you're going to have to pull with a fair amount of tension to get that knot up in there and I don't want to I don't want to destroy my fly. So I've left about a half inch of bare tube back there. I'm going to put my fingers right there and then I'm going to pull that knot right up into that tube. And now it's, it's not going to slide forward. Let's see. So I've got my hook is right back here. I think I've got the perfect, the perfect proportions. Got a lot of wiggle there. Um, 
I think we've got a really attractive fly. Now I'm going to pause and I'm going to show you a couple of other color combinations. So we're back and we've got another color combination. We've tied this. Uh, we've used ostrich and we've used Lady Amherst. Uh, didn't use the grizzly ha hackle tips. We used a white craft fur brush uh, and a shrimp pink a saddle feather. Uh, this is a really nice fly to fish in, uh, in green water, uh, in uh, dirty water. It's, it's highly visible. Um, here's another color combination. And this is rigged with a, uh, a ring eye hook on a 4040 tube. Um, this is a, a much darker fly uh, with a small bead on it. Um, black is a color that fishes almost in, in, in almost all water. Um, really subtle color. We could increase the contrast if we used a, a grizzly saddle here, or a black and white barred ostrich, or a black and white lady Amherst. But uh, these are some of the, the different color options, and there are certainly more. So um, I hope you found something interesting here. Hope you have fun tying some of these flies and get out on the water.